In this presentation we're going to look at upgrading from vSphere version 4.1 to version 5.1 and we're going to do that by using VMware's update manager software. So what we have on our vCenter server currently, if we have a look we're currently running on 4.1. If we then have a look at our host we're also running on 4.1 and we're running with ESX. So let's just have a look at a couple of things on our ESX host. So we've got the config. First thing we'll have a look at here is the storage and one of the things we can see with the storage is our VMFS partitions are currently using version 3. If we then have a look at networking, what we also have here is we also have this thing called the Service Console, which allows me to manage my ESX host via my vSphere client, for example. And what we we'll lose is we'll actually lose this Service Console port when we upgrade to version 5.1, and this will be replaced with a VM kernel port, which has a tick box turned on for the management network. So we'll just come out of our vSphere client. One of the things we need to do here is actually just stop the Virtual Center Server service as part of the upgrade. So we'll just find the service. And then all we'll do here, highlight the service and stop the service. So we'll just stop this now. Leave this just stop the vCenter service. And the service is now stopped, so we'll just come out with services. We'll just locate the software. So I've got that sitting on my C drive, just copied the DVD on the C drive. So we'll put that in the lab files folder. We then put that into the vSphere 5.1 install files and we'll just auto run this. Right, now we've uh, done the auto run, we're going to go with a simple install and this will install the following components. It'll install the single sign-on, the inventory service and the VMware vCenter server. So we'll select install. And what we'll do, wait for this to pop up and we'll select the next button. Right, so we'll select next. We'll just read through the patent agreement and select next. We'll accept the license agreement after reading it and select next. Then what we'll do is we'll put in our vCenter single sign-on username and password. Now it has the password of admin at system hyphen domain, so it's gonna use this as part of the web client. And what we need to do here is just specify a password that will be used for this account. Now we've done that, select next. We're going to install SQL Express as part of the install for the single sign-on database and select next. Just specify our fully qualified domain name or IP address for the single sign-on server. So this is the name of my server and select next. We're just going to use the network service account. Best practice would be to use a valid service account that I've created purely for this purpose, but this is my lab environment. So I'm just going to go with the network service account and select next. Specify the folder for the single sign-on install and select next. Specify the port number that's going to be used and select next. And then all we're going to do here is now do the install. Now this is going to take a little while. We're not going to sit here and watch blue bars move across the screen. So what I'm going to do at this point here is just pause the demonstration and we'll return back once the installation is complete. Well, we've been going for about five minutes now. It's now installing SQL Express, so we'll wait for this to finish. Uh, next thing it'll do is actually just finish off the installation of single sign-on, and then we need to move on to the installation of the inventory service and the vCenter server. So we'll pause the video again and return back in a little bit. Uh, single sign-on's nearly done, as we can see. It's configuring the services now. Blue bar's nearly at the end, so again, we'll just pause and return back in a little bit. Now what we can see now, it's actually moved on to installing the VMware vCenter inventory service. So this will take a little while just for this to install as well. So again, what we'll do is we'll just pause the video and return back once the inventory service is installed. And so here we go, we're now into the vCenter install. So what I'll do here is I'll just enter the license key and just select the next button. And the next thing it's asking me now for is just my database options. So we've got our DSN and our ODBC driver. So just make sure it is correct, SQL native client. Just select next. It's telling me here that the vCenter server is being used by the following registered extensions and they will not be compatible, so they will not work after I've done the upgrade. I'm happy with that. I am actually going to upgrade Update Manager in a little bit anyway. So we'll select OK. Right, what I'm going to do here is because this is an upgrade, I'm going to upgrade the existing vCenter server database. I have taken a backup of the vCenter server database and then we select Next. Right, just in the case of the agent upgrade, we'll go with automatic and select next. We'll use the system account and select next again. Uh, I'm happy with all the port numbers, I'm happy with the default so we'll just select next. 
I do have less than 100 horse and 1,000 virtual machines. I've actually got one horse and three virtual machines, so we'll select Next for the Java Virtual Memory. And then we'll select Install. Now what this is going to do now is actually going to go away and install the Center 5.1. Now, as it says here, this may take up to 15 minutes. I'm not going to sit and watch it for 15 minutes, so I'll pause the video and return back after the installation is complete. So that's the upgrade now complete, so we'll just select finish. Now what we'll do is we'll actually install our VMware Update Manager. So we'll just click OK here. That's just telling us everything has installed correctly. We'll then go for our Update Manager software, which we're going to use to do the in-place upgrade for ESX 4.1 to ESXi 5.1 and select install. We'll go with the language English United States and select OK. It's just telling us that it's already found an instance of vSphere Update Manager. That's fine. I'll just select OK. I do want to do an upgrade. We'll select Next. Read through the patent agreement. And select Next. Accept the license agreement. Again, after reading it carefully. And select Next. I'm not going to bother downloading any updates. I'm only using this purely for update upgrades. So I'll turn off the little tick box and select Next. Now what I need to do here is just type in the name of my vCenter server. So type in the name of the vCenter server and also the password for the local administrator account and select Next. Database information, yep, happy with all of that, so we'll select Next. I do want to update or upgrade my Update Manager database and I have taken a backup and then select Next. Specify the name of the vCenter server and the Update Manager port settings. Don't have an internet connection, so I won't turn on the tick box for any proxy settings and select next and then select install. Now this is going to go away. It says here it'll take several minutes. From experience, it normally takes anywhere between five and ten, depending on the speed of the kit. So what we'll do at this point, yet again, just pause the video and return back once the installation is complete. And as we can see, it's now complete, so we'll just select the finish button. Now the next thing I need to do here is just update the, uh, the vSphere client as well. So we'll highlight the vSphere client, select install. We then just select English United States, click OK. Then select Next. Read through the patent agreement again, select Next. Read through the license agreement, accept the terms and select Next. And then select Next to install. Then we'll select Install. And now what it's going to do is go away and install vSphere Client 5.1. So we'll just wait for the install to start. As you can see, it's now started, so it's just going to go away and do the install. So we'll just pause the video at this point and turn back once the installation is complete. Right, so we'll select Finish. And just close down the vSphere installer and just close down the lab files folder here as well. Next thing to do is just launch up our vSphere client. And then we'll just log into our local host. And just select login. Let's go in here now. And if we have a look, we're still 4.1. But what we want to do now is just actually install the plugins for our update manager software. So we'll just run through this. Select the language. And then select next. Read through the patent agreement. And select next. Set the license agreement after reading it. And select next. And then select install. Now this doesn't take too long. Once it's up and running, we'll see it move from available plugin. And it'll go to install plugins. There you go. Just install the certificate, ignore the warning, and select close. Next thing we need to do now is actually just set up Update Manager to do our in-place upgrade of our ESX host. So if we just look at the Virtual Center server, we can see we're now running 5.1. So I'll just come to my home page, just go to my Update Manager, and then I'll go for my ESXi images. And what we want to do here is an important ESXi image. So we'll just browse through to the actual ISO file. I'll just open that up. 
select our next button. It's now going to upload this ISO file. So we'll just allow this to go through the wizard. So it's just important it now. And what we'll do is we'll just pause it for these 20 seconds. Okay, file's imported, so we'll just select next. And in the case of our baseline name here, we'll just call it ESX i 5.1 base image. And select our finish button. And what we should find if we go to baselines and baseline groups now, we now have our new ESX i 5.1 base image. So the next thing to do is actually attach this, so we'll just go to our compliance view. What we'll do is, just with an update manager here, all we're going to do here is we're just going to attach. We'll attach our 5.1 base image and select attach. Now that we've done this, what we should really do at this point here is just run a scan. But what we'll do is, I know that it is actually 4.1, so rather than run the scan and find out that it's not compliant, we'll just remediate immediately. Right, so we are going to apply this patch or upgrade. Select our next button, read through the license agreement, accept the terms and select next. What we'll also do is remove any installed third party software that's incompatible and select next. We'll actually run it now, so we'll run it immediately and select next. Won't bother with any of the, uh, the maintenance mode options because we don't have any running virtual machines and select next. And then what we'll do is select finish. And now what we can see down here, we can see that we're remediating the entry. Now this is actually installing ESXi 5.1 onto this ESX host, so it will take a little while. We won't sit and watch it. We'll pause the video and return back, hopefully when we're compliant. Right, we can see that we're in the maintenance mode now, so we can see that we're now applying the actual software. Now, as we can see now, we're now 100% compliant. So if we just have a look yet again at our VMware vCenter server, we can see that's definitely on 5.1. If we then look at our ESXi host, we can see that's also 5.1. If we then just have a look at the configuration tab, what we should be able to see under networking now is that we no longer have the service console port, and that has been replaced by a VM kernel port with the management network. And that's the end of this demonstration of upgrading vSphere 4.1 to vSphere 5.1 by using Update Manager. Thank you.